Following the initial statement, which seemed damaging to SAA, the DA has referred the matter to the Competition Commission to investigate the lease contracts between SAA and Mango Airlines. In a new twist, SAA defends that it had subleased a number of aircrafts to Mango from time to time over different periods between 2006 and 2016 at market-related prices. It's a misconception to um, pre-conclude that by virtue of who owns you, that you will operate in a certain manner or behave in a certain manner. Mango is fully state-owned, but at the same time we are a profitable, sustainable business. Um, as a business, I was given the mandate back in 2006, which was straightforward, make this work financially viable, else the company will be shut. And there are no things like bailouts in the case of, in the case of, of Mango. So we've been very proud of, of, of our achievement and the fact that we've created a financially viable and successful low-cost carrier, which for the last two years have been rated as the best low-cost carrier in Africa. Whilst opposition airlines and the DA say a mutual beneficial business relationship between SAA and Mango Airlines cannot be ignored, Bezaida Nord explains how Mango has managed to be competitive. It's really a question of oversupply that then leads to price-based competition. Um, and a lot of times these carriers are not necessarily operating best practices. So when you want to reduce your cost base uh, or reduce your pricing, you need to ensure that you've got efficient operations, that you use your aircraft assets very productively, that you use your people productively. If you do not do that, then you cannot sustain the low pricing points and it's inevitable that uh, you will exit the market. With DA describing this about 10 by SAA as an attempt to evade heavy penalties, a defensive SAA's board says it is satisfied that all lease agreements with Mengo had been concluded on a full-cost recovery basis. Lerato Moza, ANN7.